What's going on all you minties? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition and join me today for an advanced look at these collected editions coming out from Marvel this week. So stay tuned. Before getting started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us advanced copies of these collected editions. And we have some epic collections, and well one epic collection, and it's a reprint. And I know some people have been wanting it for a while. And we have a Marvel Masterworks, a couple of trades, and this Ororo trade paperback right there. Now, if there's something that doesn't interest you in this lot, I do put the timestamps in the description of the video so you can jump around. But before getting started, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Ring that bell for notifications. All of that helps with our YouTube algorithm and our channel keep growing. All right, let's go ahead and get started talking about Ororo. I just love saying her name. So kicking off this week is Ororo Before the Storm. Witty title. So Ororo Monroe. This is her early adventures in the country of Egypt. So this jumps right into um, her living in Cairo at the time. So we have a story here by Mark Semerak. This was the four issue miniseries. And he's joined by Carlo Barberi. It was a very anime feel to his artwork. I think it does a great job of introducing the character of Aurora when she was a child. And all the run-ins she had with either the law or you know, other thieves. And of course, little Easter eggs if you've been following the world of the X-Men. Um, you know, a little bit of a retcon. Of course, you have to retcon it because of her early appearances in Giant Size number 1 and then her origin stories. Uh, Chris Claremont at the time was putting uh, actual years in there and it wouldn't make any sense. So some things had to change. So this collects Aurora Before the Storm, the four-issue miniseries. It also collects Uncanny Origins number nine. Here, let's get to a few other. It does talk about her claustrophobia and where it all really began. And here's Uncanny Origins. Uh, it also collects Uncanny X-Men First Class number four. Marvel Age Team Up number 5, uh, Uncanny X-Men 265 to 266, and then material from X-Men First Class Giant Size Special and Black Panther 23. So this is the Giant Size Special right there, or First Class number 4. What's interesting though, so now she goes from child to adulthood, uh, but still talking about her character and who she is. Uh, this is the Marvel Age Spider-Man Team Up. So it's interesting to me that with these types of books, they always put in um, some kind of canon and non-canon stories in there, but just to kind of give you an idea of these characters. And 265 and 266 are really interesting to me. Yes, they talk a little bit about her origin, but this is a weird time because this is when Storm was de-aged after the whole... Um, Siege Perilous whenever they were in the Outback and this is when she runs into Gambit and of course all this eventually leads to Days of Future Present, Extinction Agenda when the rest of the X-Men see Storm and sh anyway it's just interesting that it's collected in here instead of other Storm miniseries. What I will say though is that think collections like this give me hope, here's the Black Panther issue Give me hope for a Storm Omnibus because the character has had so much growth that they they could handpick a couple, uh, probably be more than two hands full of stories from the X-Men uh, to kind of show her growth throughout the years. I always said one of my favorite character arcs in comics was the growth of Storm, how she went from goddess and not really sure of herself to leader of the x-men leader of the morlock losing her i mean to me that's one of the best character arcs in comic books and to do it justice you can't really miss an issue of x-men uh but this gives me hope that her miniseries and all the other issues that she's been featured in you know could give us an omnibus one day next up is this title right here based on this tiny tiny little game that probably nobody has heard of warhammer 40,000? I'm kidding. Please don't threaten to kill me. I, I, it was just a joke. I realize 40k has a huge fan following and some of my friends, uh, let's just say I don't see them anymore. They are in their basement building their 40k miniatures and painting them. Uh, but I'm, a, I'm nobody to judge. I'm in my basement making videos. So to each their own. But this is 
Warhammer 40k Sisters of Battle. This um, is a follow-up to this uh, story right here, Marnius Calgar. Even though it takes place, I think, in another sector, Marnius does not show up in here. Uh, whereas this volume right here, this one's written by Karen Gillen, uh, focused more on one character, and it jumped around in the timeline. This one here focuses on the sect of Sisters of Battle, as they're known. And this collects issues one through five of that miniseries. This is written by Torun Grombeck, and she was one of the writers on the Valkyrie story, um, the Jane Foster Valkyrie story. I think she was co-writing it with Jason Aaron at first, and now Ewing, and then eventually I think she became the head writer. And she just writes this story of, like I said, this, this group of sisters of battle that is a squad of just ladies that are uh they're all led by this lady named uh Canonis. um i don't remember what her last name is and they go to this planet known as sisia to retrieve a inquisitor's acolyte of course what they're really going to be doing in the meantime is purging a bunch of heretics because in this world it's nothing but war and I find it interesting that me never having played the game, me never having read the books, and my friends, uh, some of them that have played the game um, or that collect the miniatures, they've all told me that some of the best science fiction that has ever been written are in the Warhammer books. Now, of course, I realize that just might be them thinking that, and, but I think when I did my overview of the very first uh, trade paperback by Karen Gillan, who's a big gamer, by the way, some people started commenting that, yes, the actual novels are really good and the weapons that they create. And that is one thing I say I will say about the comics. The weapons that are in this book are insane. Holy crap. And I realize that's what most of this is. This feels more like uh, Aliens type of, if you've seen the movie, where the Marines go in and trying to figure out what's wrong uh, with this station this human station where a bunch of humans have disappeared but anyway this is very similar to that it's a bunch of sisters that go in there uh try to acquire this acolyte uh but they're also doing you know heretic purging there's a lot of death in here and the thing about me not having read or having played any of this i don't know which character is going to live or die so you have a couple of characters that are named here and i don't know if they appear in the actual canon of the games uh but I, I had a lot of fun with this one because I didn't know who was going to survive, who was going to die. So to me, it was just balls out crazy action adventure. I really enjoyed this one. And I'll be honest, I think I like this one more than I like Karen Gillan's Warhammer book. Because this one here had some plot twists in it that I really enjoyed. I like when there's a twist uh, and I didn't see it coming. Maybe because I was too caught up in the action. But also because it was easy to focus on just a group of soldiers going in and having a task instead of jumping through different times like in the first book. And it feels like Torun really does a good job of just, this is what Warhammer is, right? Or partially is. Um, but this one here has 120 pages, retails for $15.99. Let's look in the back here to see how the variants are collected and all the extras. One of the things that I enjoyed too is throughout the issues, not in between the issues, but throughout the actual comic, they'll put stats in there of like weapons and the planet and stuff. I thought that was really cool. So here's some variant covers right here. Some of them are thumbnails, some of them are splash. It's a, it's a really interesting kick-ass world, that's for sure. So anybody that plays it, I'm kind of jealous of that because I don't... I know how expensive those pieces get. And speaking of Al Ewing that I just mentioned in the last book, next up is Sword. This is volume two. And this collects issue seven through 11 of Sword. Now, something you're probably noticing is that this skips issue six. Well, issue six is part of the Hellfire Gala. So that's where that is collected. It's in the trade paperbacks or it's in the oversized hardcover. This jumps right in with issue number seven. So we're dealing with Empire in here. And we're dealing with the aftermath of the Hellfire Gala. As a matter of fact, Dr. Doom is still sitting there. Doesn't want to leave the party. I get it. I'm like that. I don't want to leave the party. I'm going to stay till the lights are out, baby. I'm staying at your house and drinking your liquor. 
but he's having dinner, lovely dinner with this beautiful lady right there, Storm. So all of this written by Al Ewing. You have Stefano Caselli, uh, Jacob, J Jacopo Camagini, and Gui Villanova doing a lot of the artwork. And then the covers, of course, provided by Valerio Schitti. But I like the contrast of having a nice dinner with dessert, just having a civil conversation, and then all out war between different races during the empire. So that I actually enjoyed the way that issue ended. And then you have this one shot of cable in here. So you have the original cable. Um, you have Cannonball, Boom Boom, Whiz Kid, love to see him. You have Korra, who is just a kind of a new character. And then you have Lila Cheney, of course, show up. Uh, now, that, that's an interesting one-shot because why is Old Man Cable back? You have another issue focused on Storm and Tarn here. But the main thing that I got out of this is there's some interesting thing that happens to uh, Peter Gyrick. But the, yes, so the Imperial Guard is back. And we also have a new updated Lethal Legion right here. So we're introduced to these characters. Half-Bot, Mr. Eloquent, the Electric Head... Orbis Extremis Death Grip. Kind of goofy names, but they are a series of just badasses that are wiping the floor with the Imperial Guard. Granted, the Imperial Guard isn't as tough as they were at one time in the pages of the Dark Phoenix Saga. I think Grant Morrison <laughs> completely destroyed half the team during their run on New X-Men, but still, it takes a lot to take down the Imperial Guard. I like this huge fight. And, of course, anytime a bad guy comes in that's introduced and is already stronger than the previous villains that you thought were just completely badass, always takes me back to my childhood of Dragon Ball Z. Just how much stronger can we get? A hell of a lot stronger. That's how much stronger we can get. Uh, this book has 176 pages. Let's look at the extras. So the covers are all the way here in the back and then you get some of the variant covers and it retails for $19.99. I'm a liar. You just get the standard covers. The variant covers are collected in between the chapters. This is what the spines look like for all you spine watchers. And at this moment, as always, I like to remind people to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Ring that bell for notifications. All right, let's continue with the overviews. All right, next up, I'm actually going to have some help from... Astonishing Melanie. That's right. My wife, who currently read this run. She's never read Moon Knight, and she actually did a review of it on the channel. We have this cover here by Steve McNiven. Check it out. Hit that like button. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. What I mean, uh, <laughs> right. for my video. Oh, for your video. <laughs> it was like, now? So this is the new series by Jed McKay. Uh, Alessandro Capuccio does the art, and we have, uh, is it Rochelle Rosenberg, I think, that does the colors? at that. The book is 144 pages and retails for $17.99 and collects the 2021 series of Moon Knight issues 1 through 6 and I gotta go back to this. All right, Stasha Melanie, you can flip through here and talk about the book. The character of Moon Knight suffers from dissociative identity disorder and um, that's played a big theme throughout the books. However, in this new, I guess, not restart, but anyway, this new iteration, Mr. Knight is not a different persona, but just like the new role he is playing, that he is the protector of those who travel at night. So he is helping out his neighborhood, um, kind of rem reminiscent of Daredevil. Um, he gets, you know, a sidekick assistant. <laughs> um, he, uh, who, a woman who was turned to vampire. She's like, I don't want to have anything to do with this. Um, and he collects a gang of, uh, not Scooby-Doo gang, but a gang of people um, to help him out. He has a new nemesis. This guy, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, Dr. Bader. Um, he is another Fist of Khonshu, and they butt heads in terms of like, well, how are you supposed to be a Fist of Khonshu if you don't know what that is? Khonshu being the Egyptian god that brought... Mark Spector back to life, and that's why he's one of his fists, like I'm a, servants. Um, I'm gonna be one of those comic book guys. And actually, say, Mr. All right, so Knight. Mr. Knight was actually <laughs> a creation uh, that was first, oh, okay. first appeared in. Uh, it was Warren Ellis's run, 
and he's kind of been a part of Moon Knight since then. Other other creators like Jeff Lemire have used the character oh. of Mr. Knight in the past. So it's nothing really new, uh, but it is used in an interesting way during this particular run. If you'd like a more in-depth uh, review, spoiler-free and spoilers, check out my video. Um, Link above! And before we go, though, I did want to check out some of the extras in here. So I'm censoring the final page there on the left-hand side, and we have the variant covers collected like this in thumbnail format. So not in splash pages. There is some gorgeous covers, too. I wish these were splash. I mean, these are just too small. I think that Arthur Adams is awesome. And then this is the Moon Knight promo page from Avengers 45. So let's move on to the next book. Thank you, Astonishing Melanie. You're welcome. Next up is Moon Knight. This is a reprint of Final Rest. This is volume three of the Moon Knight Epic Collections. Now, I do have my original. Uh, both of these were printed at the Solisco printer. So they should be the same quality other than... I can see right off the bat, this is a little bit darker. The original printing is a little bit darker. Uh, you can tell by the actual lettering right there, the logo of Moon Knight. And I mean, just a tad bit darker, but everything about it is the same. Other than the fact, of course, that the original printing uh, solicited for $39.99 and the new reprint is $44.99. Um, the paper quality feels the same to me as far as the thickness of it. It doesn't seem like, I mean, I'll be honest, it feels like the new printing feels just a little bit thicker. Not gonna lie, it feels just a little bit thicker than the original printing. Not that there was anything wrong with the original printing. So here we have Moon Knight. This is volume three. Uh, so this collects issues. 24 through 38 wrapping up that original first series uh, you have the remaining run of Doug Bench and Bill Sienkiewicz's amazing take on the character of Mark Spector uh, they were able to just dig deep into the fracture psyche of this wonderful multi-leveled character that a lot of people first you know considered oh he's just I hate when people called him the white Batman uh, people that had never read Moon Knight and yeah okay so in a way he sort of started that way but you know the character evolved past that in this volume and the last part of volume two I think is when it's this book finally found its voice and it was just this beautiful mashup of Bill Sienkiewicz's art and the words by Doug Minch it's just phenomenal I know, don't get me wrong, you know, the people that eventually took over the book after Doug Mensch left, uh, Tony Isabella, uh, just, they're, they're still good superhero stories, but more of a supernatural element to them. And then, of course, uh, Bill Sienkiewicz leaves in issue number 30, so he's got, yeah, one more issue after this. Now, these were originally published in comic book stores, so these never made it out into the book market. They weren't at grocery stores or pharmacies or wherever you found comics usually. These were just found at comic book stores, so they could get away with a lot more. Uh, one of the things they got away with was how big these books were. So they were longer than most of the comics that were coming out at the time. So yes, by now, um, Bill Sienkiewicz has left. Kevin Nolan steps in as guest penciler from time to time. And we also have this early, early Mark Silvestri. This must have been around the time he did that little stint on Conan. But doesn't even look like his artwork. It's really cool to go back and see these art. Like, this is my favorite artist, and I couldn't tell it was him. Matter of fact, they spell his name with a K instead of a C. Not used to seeing it that way. Yeah, Mark with a K, Silvestri. So... This wraps up the whole idea of exploring the themes of revenge and violence. And then, like I said, it gets more into the supernatural element of the Marvel Universe. And it just felt different. So there is a volume two of the Omnibus that will collect all these stories that you'll find in here. And I even think, yeah, it has the Vengeance of Moon Knight. Oh, you get the appearance of... The X-Men in here in the Fantastic Four. Just felt like he was stepping out of his comfort zone. Moon Knight, I meant. Not the writers. 
Uh, you have Alan Zelenitz now, Bo Hampton, working together on the book. And then, of course, the book being sadly canceled in issue number 38. I love these house ads for the upcoming issues, though. They were great. That's a hell of a cover right there. So let's look at the extras in the back. So we do have some extras back here. You have editorial notes by the phenomenal and legendary Dennis O'Neill for different issues of Moon Knight, including the final issue right here, 38, and then the new directions for Moon Knight uh, for Marvel Age number 9. Now, the book here, like I said, it's the exact same printing, the same page count. So it has 488 pages. However, it retails for $44.99. And you have an outro by Ralph Macchio, who was the editor at the time. So this is that Frank Miller piece right there. Last but certainly not least is the Marvel Masterworks Marvel 2-in-1 Volume 6. And... This is the standard edition. Both the direct market and standard are available today. This one retails for $75 and has 304 pages. But this is the latest volume of the Marvel 2-in-1. And I've talked about Marvel 2-in-1s on the channel before. And what these are are stories about the thing, Ben Grimm. And he was such a popular character. Here we have an introduction by Ralph Macchio. Uh, he was such a popular... Who co-wrote a lot of these stories here with the phenomenal and legendary... Mark Grunewald, gone way too soon. Um, so he was such a popular character that what Marvel decided to do was introduce readers to other characters in the Marvel Universe, whether they were obscure or whether sometimes their titles weren't selling or they just wanted to throw in a story for the sake of throwing a story. So they teamed him up with a big A-lister. But that's what this was. So you always saw Marvel 2 and one the Thing, and blank somebody else. There is an issue in here, though, that I never saw or read before, and it's Marvel 2 and 1, The Thing, and question mark. It didn't guest star anybody, but it did. But uh, we have the return of her, who I believe she was called, what was she called, Paragon at first, when she first appeared. But it's the female counterpart to Adam Warlock. Uh, but that team up doesn't have her as the guest star. It has Starhawk, one of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Then you have Moon Dragon in this particular story right here. You do have some artwork by Jerry Bingham, and then you have uh, George Pettis doing some of the artwork, and of course, Ron Wilson, who has been drawing this particular title since issue number 17. He comes in and draws, like, the, the man was just fast. Uh, so you do have the thing teaming up with different characters, and then sometimes it's one ongoing story that just leads to him teaming up with one character after another, you have Stingray here, last seen in the pages of The Submariner by Roy Thomas, and then that story leads into the Serpent Crown Affair, or th this continues the Serpent Crown Affair before Atlantis attacks. And actually, I think this, inter yeah, this is the introduction right here of the Serpent Squad. So you have Death Adder, first appearance of Anaconda, Sidewinder, and Black Mamba. It also has the first appearance of, oh, what was his name? The the Inhuman, Maelstrom. Oh, look at that. That is a beautiful, this is the one that stars uh, Scarlet Witch. So you get the idea of what this is. The The series lasted about, a no, it did last 100 issues. And it had a few annuals, I think eight or nine annuals. So it was huge at one time. And so many people have wanted it back. This is the series that Chip Zdarsky brought back with... Um, his oversized hardcover that came out should not be missed because it is freaking phenomenal. You have the Guardians of the Galaxy show up through here. Yeah, right here. This issue number 70 where he's with Alicia Masters. Marvel 2 and 1 featuring the thing and question mark. Well, you can find out for yourself who is the guest star. This is Maelstrom. This is the introduction right here of Maelstrom. He's one of the Inhumans who stuck around for a long time. I think the last time I saw him was in the pages of the Great Lake Avengers. And as far as the extras in the back, there is some house ads, some original art there by Jerry Bingham. George Perez original cover and art. It's always a sucker for the design of Stingray. And then the biographies, of course of some of the people that have left us and some of the creators that are still with us. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in any of these books, don't forget to check out our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by 
CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your confirmation email from CGN, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content and page count of these trades. Let me know in the comments down below which ones you're going to get. And again, I always like to stress that even though these books are due out on February 15th, some people will be getting it on February 16th, depending on where you get your collected editions. If you've read any of these, do let me know what you thought of the stories in the comments down below. If you've been looking forward to getting the Marvel Masterworks, uh, the Marvel 2 and 1, it's been a long time coming. Um, and of course, if you have any more questions, leave your questions down below. This was The Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to please check out our Patreon and Spread Shop. Amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. And more importantly, all of you, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Much love.